Do not merely listen to the word and so deceive yourselves. Do what it says. Anyone who listens to the word but does not do what it says is like someone who looks at his face in the mirror and, after looking at himself, goes away and immediately forgets what he looks like. But whoever looks intently into the perfect law that gives freedom and continues in it, not forgetting what they have heard, but doing it, they will be blessed in what they do. the blood of Jesus Christ that covers me and raises dead souls to It's all because of Jesus. It's all because of Jesus I'm alive. It's all because of the blood of Jesus Christ i 
We're going to have the ushers come forward for offering. Please bow your heads for prayer. Dear Lord, Sometimes it's really hard financially. And uh, giving offering can be a hard thing. But that's, that's part of the reason why you want us to do it, God. Because you want us to give all of ourselves to you, Lord. And this money, this offering, is all yours anyway. So God, we pray that as we give this offering today, that you would bless the offering, where it goes, who it blesses, and bless us through it as well, Lord. We give to you from our hearts. In Jesus' name, amen.
take their place with selfless faith, with selfless faith. I see a near revival stirring as we pray and sleep. We're on our knees. We're on The children can come forward. Pastor Luke is going to do a children's message for you guys. And uh, there you go. Come on up, guys. Come on up. Where are you at? Come on. Good morning. Good morning. Okay. You ready for my question? I got a question for you. You ready? Uh -huh. Yeah? Okay. You gotta think about this one. This might be a hard one. I don't know. We'll see. Ready? Whose job is it to tell people about Jesus? Anybody know? Whose job is it to tell people about Jesus? Who's supposed to do that? My eyes Is it the pastor's job? Psst. Hey. Whose job is it to tell people about Jesus? Hard question, right? Okay, let's try a different question. Who told you about Jesus? My mama. Your mom? Good answer. Who told you about Jesus? Your mom and dad? That's good. Who told you about Jesus? Me. You told yourself? Yes. Wow, we have a prophet. <laughs> okay, here's what I think. I think it's everyone's job to tell people about Jesus. You don't have to be a mom or a pastor to tell people about Jesus. All you got to do is be someone who loves Jesus. Do you love Jesus? You can tell people about Jesus. Do you love Jesus? Yeah. You can tell people about Jesus. Did you know you could tell your friends about Jesus? Yes. An adult doesn't have to do it. You can do it. Now I want you to think for just a minute. Think quietly in your head. 
about someone you know, maybe someone at school, who probably doesn't know Jesus. Can you think of someone? A friend, maybe. You could be the person who introduces them to Jesus. How cool would that be? Wouldn't that be cool? Yeah! You can do it. You really can. It's not that hard. Yeah. I just wanted you to know that. You don't have to wait for an adult to do it. You can do it. Okay? Let's pray. Dear Jesus, I pray for my friends who are here. And I know they have friends who haven't met you yet. I pray that you will help them to remember and to be brave and to tell their friends about you so that they can know you too. I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. All right. You can go to Children's Church or you can go back to sit with your families. All right. Good morning again. Anybody tired this morning? I got a few yeses. You know, sometimes, sometimes when you feel tired, you kind of project that onto everybody else you see, and it seems like everyone must be tired. You ever felt that way? So I wasn't sure if you were actually tired or if it was just because I'm really tired. You all look really tired this morning. That's probably just me. Anyway, um, we've been talking the last couple weeks about the mission of our church, and not just of our church, meaning this bunch of people, but THE church, kind of capital C church, meaning everybody everywhere who's following Jesus. We believe that uh, our mission has to include two very important things. First is what Jesus described as the greatest commandment, which is to love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind, and also to love your neighbor as yourself. Those are the two things we talked about the last two Sundays. Second, we believe our mission has to include what we've come to call the Great Commission. This is the last instruction, the last directive that Jesus gave to his disciples while he was here on earth in bodily form. So this is after he died on the cross, after he was raised from the dead, and right before he ascended into heaven, he tells his disciples, that their job is to go and make more disciples. And that's what we're going to look at today. Now, I have somewhat of a confession to make before we dive into this topic. I don't feel it would be entirely honest for me to preach on this topic without first telling you that I am not good at evangelism. I am not good at introducing people to Jesus for the first time. When I admit this, even to myself, I feel guilty that as a pastor, I haven't been bringing people to the Lord. And when I am brave enough to let myself even think that thought in words, it reminds me that it is not my job as a pastor to bring people to Jesus. It's my job as a Christian. It has nothing to do with whether I'm a pastor or not. I believe it's okay to not be a natural at evangelism. I don't believe it's okay to simply decide not to do it. I cannot say to myself, I'm not gifted at that. Someone else will have to do that part. So with every scripture and every question and every challenge that might come out of my mouth this morning, please know that I am listening with you to the Lord. And I am convicted and encouraged to change and to grow. Let's listen to the Lord together this morning and be brave enough to be vulnerable before him. Please turn with me, if you will, to Matthew chapter 28. This is one of those awesome Sundays where I forgot to bring a Bible up here. So I'm going to come find one. Matthew chapter 28. Thanks. Thanks. 
Matthew chapter 28. The very last page in the book of Matthew. We're going to read this Great Commission. And I think I'm going to read it twice. It's not too long. And that will let us absorb it a little bit more. Matthew chapter 28. We're going to read verses 16 through 20. All right. Here it is. The Great Commission. Then the eleven disciples went to Galilee, to the mountain where Jesus had told them to go. When they saw him, they worshipped him, but some doubted. Then Jesus came to them and said, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. And surely I am with you always, to the very end of the age. Last thing Jesus said to his followers while he was here in the flesh before he ascended into heaven. Let's read it again. And if you feel like it this time, feel free and close your eyes. Try and imagine the scene and just absorb Jesus' words and know that he says them to us as well as to the disciples that were there on the hill that day. Then the eleven disciples went to Galilee to the mountain where Jesus had told them to go. When they saw him, they worshipped him. But some doubted. Then Jesus came to them and said, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. And surely I am with you always to the very end of the age. That's our great commission, part of our mission as a church. And we call the one set that we talked about the last two weeks the greatest commandment, but the commission is also phrased as a command. It's instructions to us, what our job is as followers of Jesus. So first and most obviously, what is it that we're told to do? Well, we're told to go and make disciples, teaching them to obey everything Jesus has commanded. For me, the first and most convicting part of this command is that the subject of this sentence, the person who's supposed to be taking action, is me. I'm supposed to be doing something. And that something is making disciples for Jesus. Now, it's true that I cannot convict a person's heart or call them in the depths of their soul to turn to Jesus. The Holy Spirit does that. I can't. But there is a part that I'm called to play. It's also true that I cannot make a decision on somebody else's behalf. If I share the love of Jesus with somebody and they choose not to accept, not to follow him, that's their decision. Not mine. I can't do that for them. But there is a part I've been called to play. And that's the instruction we're looking at today. It's supposed to be me taking action. It's supposed to be us. We have to own that. The second part of the command is to teach these new disciples to obey everything I have commanded you, meaning that Jesus has commanded his disciples. It's important to realize that this is not a separate instruction. It's all part of what it means to make disciples. Even if we are really good at guiding people to say a prayer of repentance, and we've introduced them to Jesus, that's excellent. But if we don't then teach them how to obey what Jesus has commanded, we're not doing the full task of forming them into disciples. They're forgiven, yes, and that's what they need most. But it's not everything we've been instructed to do. Making them disciples involves teaching them to obey. I've noticed that sometimes we think that if we catch on to that word teaching, then we've got it. And so we teach information, possibly theology. We make disciples, and then we teach them everything there is to know about God. 
And that knowledge is important. But it's not what Jesus said here. Jesus did not say, make disciples teaching them to understand everything that you've learned about me. He said teaching them to obey, which is an action word. Everything I've commanded you. I think obedience doesn't necessarily result from understanding. Just knowing about God doesn't necessarily mean you're going to follow Him. But sometimes, obeying God, learning how to do that even when you don't understand, can lead to understanding Him further. So the basic instruction we're given here is go and make disciples and teach them to obey everything that I've instructed you. One of the things that our Bishop Thomas said when he preached on this topic at General Conference the last spring is that we often make the mistake of looking only at that command and not the sentence before or after it. It's not the only thing Jesus said there. There's a very interesting little part before it and a very interesting little part after it, and it's easy to forget them. But the things that make it possible for us to follow this instruction. So let's look at these two things. Jesus makes two promises here, and I'm going to read them again just so they're fresh in our mind. I know this is time number three, but I'm sleepy today, so I'm going to read them again. All right. I'm going to start in verse 18. Then Jesus came to them and said, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations. Now, you could read this that Jesus is saying, well, you could first say, I don't see the connection between Jesus being given all authority and that we're supposed to go and make disciples. It seems like a non sequitur to me. Um, or you could read it and say, Jesus' point is, I'm fairly amazing, therefore go and make disciples. Right? All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. So I need disciples. Go make them for me. Um, you could read it that way, but that doesn't match with what we know of Jesus' character. And what's really going on here is Jesus is saying, all authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me, and what I choose to do with that authority is give it to you. All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me, therefore I have the power to give you this task 